All right, welcome back to Stock Tricks with Nick for this week's Midweek Mover Edition. Typically, I do these as a live stream about an hour long where I'll cover my watch list and then go to any of the stocks that you guys want to see in the comment section. Unfortunately, don't have the time for that tonight, but did not want to leave you without a watch list for the rest of the week. So I have 11 stocks to go over today with breakout potential. If you're coming for a specific stock, I'll do the uh, place timestamps at the beginning of each section, and those will be in the comments below. Uh, before we get into the watch list, did want to just uh, talk about the flush that we saw with some growth stocks today. Uh, that's what happens when everything's pretty far extended from a base. Not many stocks were actually breaking out of bases, but we're just extending higher and higher away from some moving averages. So when that happens, uh, you're more likely to see these flash pullbacks or, or flushes uh, back to some key moving averages to see if there's any support there. Uh, this is something that I was calling out on stock twits. So let's jump over to stock twits so you can see. Um, Pack B got gapped up, took some profits there. Uh, busy day ahead of me. Uh, ha moving partial stops very high to take some risk off the table if things move down. Uh, if anything is down today, this is during that euphoric first half hour where everything was green. My account was up 4%, uh, $1,800 on the day, the first 30 minutes. But I was trying to warn people, if if you have any positions that were down during the first half hour, those were getting cut or trimmed. Um, don't let euphoria destroy a trading plan. And then just calling out that I went from 120% long invested to 77%. Uh, so I did a lot of trimming during the first half hour, uh, selling into strength, moving some stops to my entry or even higher on some partial positions. Just because if the market pulls back, I want to lock in some profit, build up a cash position for some new positions uh, in, in a couple days, weeks, when, whenever we build out a base and, and get going again. But uh, that's how I trade. There's many different ways to make money in the market, but I always uh, really trade risk first. So uh, once the market starts pulling back or shows signs of pulling back, I'm selling into strength um, and protecting my initial capital. All right. That being said, uh, make sure you follow me on StockTwits, Twitter, and TikTok. If you enjoy this video, uh, leave a like and subscribe to the channel, Stock Tricks with Nick. Quick disclaimer, anything that I talk about today is for educational purposes only. It's not stock advice, not trading advice, uh, not financial advice. Please do your own due diligence before trading. Trading comes with financial risk. All right, so here's the stock lineup that we got for today, 11 different names. Uh, the stars just mean that I hold uh, positions in them. So AMTX and BNGO both bought those today. Doesn't mean that they're the best setups out there, just means that I already have positions there. All right, let's jump to the chart and we will get started. First, we have AMTX. Let's see. Is this... Yep. All right, so as you can see here, a lot of the up bars uh, or a lot of the high volume bars come on gap up days or, or um, yeah, days that, that move up really high. And that's something that you you like to see. You want to see accumulation. And when everything pulls back, it does so nice and easy. Not a lot of shares getting sold off on any of the pullbacks here. So uh, this was a name that I traded through this kind of pullback to break out. Um, but just recently, we had a 340% move. From there, we've pulled back quite a bit, um, had a pullback of 44%. So typically, when that happens, you need about <clears throat> at least six weeks before carving out uh, a, a nice base, typically a little bit longer than that. But uh, this has pulled back to the eight day on such light volume and is really stuck on that eight day exponential moving average that. Um, I, I took the trade today, not a huge position, but um, what I was noticing, relative strength. When everything was flushing, this stayed above the previous day's low. Um, and for a stock that's already so far extended, you would think that when the market growth market starts pulling back, this should have been the first name to really start flushing down, and it didn't. So it showed great relative strength, rallied and closed right at the high of the day. Um, so what you could be doing tomorrow is if we open lower and then take out the high of the day today, which was 788, that would be a possible buy point. Um, or you could wait till a break over February 4th high of 814. So 
two possible buy points there. Uh, really take note of the low volume coming back in and the really high volume going out and the relative strength today. It's AMTX. Next, we have APPN. This was a stock that I've traded uh, in the past. Uh, we had, before this, really strong breakout. This was 260% or so. Pulled back. 41% based out, had a nice flush under some previous lows before really taking off here. Uh, since then, we've pulled back, undercut the eight day, haven't even tested the 20 day. Uh, so really showing some good signs of strength, rallied up, and, and now you can see it's tightening up through here. Uh, today's low bounced right at the eight day, held pretty good relative strength, only down a quarter percent, uh, not too bad there. So I'll just be looking for a break over uh, the high from the fifth, which is 229.18 um, as a possible buy point there. You could take it with a break over today's high, but that's I don't know, a little bit aggressive. But I mean, if that fits your trading strategy, then you can get a tighter stop loss and, and maybe you can uh, make more multiples of your, your risk that way. But that's what I'll be looking for. That's APPN. Next, we have ARVN. This one, uh, I really picked this out just because the average true range ATR is coming in so, so nicely. So the um, the range of each of the daily bars are getting tighter and tighter, uh, meaning there's just less disagreement over price at this point. We had uh, a really strong breakout. We'll just cover from the breakout point, moved up 206%. Uh, finally had that 26% pullback through here. I, I did take this trade um, on this day going out, got some into, sold some into strength, got stopped at even on the rest. Good thing it, I did because the rest flushed, finally came back up. And now zooming in here, let me hide the, the main candles. Very, very light volume as this started to trade sideways, but good volume on the way out. Um, there was one strike against the chart is the heavier volume on the way down during this uh, kind of pullback, 26%. But um, with the the daily bars being so tight, if you're wrong on the trade, you're going to be wrong immediately and going to be wrong with a very small amount. So I'll just be looking for a break over this pivot high of 84.88 as a possible buy point. It's ARVN. Next, we have another one that I just took today. Very small position on this one that I took. BNGO. Very, very strong stock. You could see uh, just from Christmas basically up 1800% on this move. Since it's peaked, it pulled back 31%. Uh, had a rally, pulled back to the eight day mini rally, pulled back again today. Um, I bought when it undercut the low, undercut the eight day, and then ran back up to the low. So I'm down maybe a half percent, 1% on the trade so far. Uh, but again, really small position because my, my main plan is to add uh, a normal size full position if we get over these two daily highs that was not drawn perfectly but uh 12, 1270 and uh 1267 so uh, you could go with either of those highs as a possible buy point uh similar to amtx look at the volume on the way out versus on the pullback way out versus pullback way out versus pullback a lot of people are trying to get into the name not many people are trying to get out it's bngo next we have e l y s Ellie's 200 day just starting to turn up here. So one thing that I look for is the 200 day to be in an uptrend for at least one month before I tried trading the stock, just so all of the different durations of traders are on the same side, uh, get more buyers that way. Similar to AMTX, look at the big volume bars. When do those happen? On very strong days. Uh, the only large selling bar was on this day, which was quickly um, bought up and rallied back over kind of this uh, pullback. Today's candle really set up the trade. We pulled back just like every growth stock did, undercut the eight day, undercut the 20 day, and then rallied back up into the close. And look at the volume on the, the last two days of, of pullback, extremely light volume. So a couple of ways you could, you could take this trade. You could just um, go with a break over today's high. I would probably wait <clears throat> A little bit longer, May, maybe wait for the high of uh, February 8th, which would be 629. So 630 would be the buy point. Um, 
if it trades sideways for a couple more days, then we could get that diagonal uh, kind of aligning with a pivot, just a flat top entry. Then you get the confluence of indicators, two different types of systems, diagonal resistance, flat top resistance, both buy points. Then you, you line up some probability on your side with that. But if we're going to take the trade tomorrow, I, I would just look with a high a break over um, 629, which is the high from February 8th. E-L-Y-S. NTRA is next. Uh, this one, obviously, all, all the stocks that I talk about are in strong uptrends. we got the 200-day, the 50-day, the 20, and the 8. Um, we had a one, one strike against the chart is this larger selling volume when we pull back to the 50-day. 22%, though, uh, not, not too bad. Rally back up and had a nice flush day. Undercut the 8-day, undercut the 20-day, rallied right back up. And now we have kind of this flat top, um, flat top buy point all throughout here. So let me get rid of that now that you've seen it. So break over 120.80, the high from February 3rd would be my buy point. It's NTRA. NVTA is next. Oh, wait. This has earnings. Never mind. Not NVTA. My bad. I don't trade into earnings unless I have a 10% profit on the name and one week going into earnings, a little bit too much uh, volatility for me. So uh, that's just the way I trade. You don't have to trade that way. There's plenty of ways to make money. But uh, next we have PLL. This one, uh, you can see strong cup, handle, and uh, very, very light volume on the pullback today. Only down 1.3%, 1.4%, um, even though the uh, growth market had that strong pullback. I would just be going with a break over yesterday's high, 61.99, a round number, 62. Break of that uh, would, would be a great buy point. And with a cup like this, cup and handle like this, a lot of power on the name. Last breakout was 136%, pulled back 29% and, and looks ready to go again. Volume's doing all the right things. Um, price relativity is doing the, th the the right things holding up above the eight day exponential. It's PLL, got three more for you. This one's my favorite of the list, but just because it's my favorite, doesn't mean I'm gonna take the trade. And even if I do take the trade, I'm always gonna put a stop loss, uh, five to 7%. Ideally we could keep it 3%, but never more than 7% on a trade. Um, and if I'm wrong, I'm wrong small, but when I'm right, I'm right big. And that's how we make money in the market. This is an IPO, uh, really strong action, 120% up. We had a pullback of 17%, so high tight flag, IPO, really, really powerful setup. Had a great shakeout today, uh, taking out some previous lows in this pullback, undercut the 8-day, undercut the 20-day, ran back up, closed above both those metrics, and did so all, all, all that on very light volume. So this is kind of one of those setups where it seems too good to be true. So Sometimes it is, and we'll get a head fake up and then a reverse lower, but I'm still going to take the trade um, if we break over the high from yesterday, which would be 40.62, uh, and probably get some size on it. And remember, just because this is what I think uh, a perfect setup looks like, even though I put the trade on, I'm always going to use stop losses because uh, my opinion doesn't matter. The only thing that matters is price, and I'm not getting paid for my opinion, so... Always have some risk control. Last two, we got TTCF. This was, I guess, technically an IPO high type flag. We had, uh, maybe not, hold on. Move up 91%, pull back 21%. So technically, uh, yeah. So high type flag, 90% or more in eight weeks or less, and then a pullback of within 25% from the highs. So had this kind of flag action. Let me, had this broke out pulled back, undercut the low. So really frustrating for any breakout traders, but typically the more frustrating the setup, uh, once it does go, people will start stumbling over themselves trying to buy buy in because they've been watching this for so long, getting so frustrated that they don't want to miss out on the move. So if we can get over this, uh, what is this, six day pivot, five day pivot, um, then we, we could see some buyers step in. This did squat a little bit, but still up 2% on the day, on a day where most growth stocks were, were weak. So break over 2508, which is the high from February 4th, would be my buy point. It's TTCF. And last but not least, we have XL. 
Uh, this one could use a little bit more time, I think, um, but a lot of people have been talking about this, so wanted to at, at least show what I was thinking. Uh, had a first pullback after a, obviously a very strong move, a 44%. Did what I really like to see, which is undercut that first pullback low, really shaking out any of the weaker hands or people that got in immediately for the quick bounce. Um, so overall, pullback of 47% from the highs. And typically when that happens, you need that, that base to build out. And that's what you're seeing with this one. Uh, so far, only 33 days of base building. So that's about six and a half weeks. Um, doing all the right things from a volume perspective. You see high volume that day, that day, that day. All those were on green days. Um, today, a little bit down 4.2% on slightly heavier volume. So maybe this is one that just flushes down. And that's why I'm only buying on the way out. I'm only buying stocks that are breaking out, not just randomly in a base, because bases can fail, stocks can pull back down, and I always want my money either completely safe, away from the market, uh, in a cash position, or in a stock that's working out for me immediately. Otherwise, I don't want to take the risk. So with this one, it'll need a little bit of time for me. You could take it with just a break over today's high, 21.63. That's possible, but I'm really eyeing uh, the high from February 4th, which is 22.22 as a possible buy point. All right, that is going to be the breakout watch list, or not the breakout watch list, sorry, midweek movers. Again, sorry that it wasn't a live stream. We'll be back to live streaming that next week, but I appreciate the support. Make sure you subscribe to the channel, like the video if you enjoyed the content, and, so, and uh, follow me on StockTwits, Twitter, and TikTok. Take care.